Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, SAP with IK. Hope you're all doing good. So today in this video, uh, we'll be discussing on a new topic such as the SMD processing uh, with the process orders or the production orders. So basically this topic talks about the creation of the process orders or the production orders while creating the sales order itself. So we know that in the general or the uh, usual scenarios of the sales order, so we are going to create the demand against the sales order and then the schedule lines will get generated. And based on the stock situations for that material in the plant, the MRP will be executed. And if there is a deficit of stock, then the plant orders will be created. So this complete process is going to take some time and the user have to uh, wait until the next MRP run or he has to manually execute the MRP, right? So this is a kind of a tedious and a time taking process. So if we use this process of the, of the dynamic uh, order processing, so then it would be easy for the user like he need not wait until the next MRP run or go into a different transaction and execute MRP. So as soon as he creates a sales order, he will be automatically navigated into the process order or the production order screen. And while he saves the sales order itself, the process order number will also be created at that instant itself. So it's not only about the creation of the process orders or the production orders, but even you have the flexibility by tweaking uh, some of the standard configurations and you can make it happen to create a planned orders as soon as the sales order is created. So let's see how this works in SAP. Let's get started. So here we are in SAP and uh, I'm in the MD04 of this particular material. So this is going to be the test case. So before we go into the sales order, uh, the sales order creation, let's have a look on the master data. So here, this is basically an in-house manufactured item. As you can see, the procurement type as E and E stands for uh, in-house manufacturing, right? And here I've applied the strategy group as 82. So 82, it basically stands for the order processing dynamically. So if I go into the details of this, you can see that the assembly orders with the production orders. So that's the uh, description of this strategy group. But if you would like to uh, tweak the settings uh, behind the standard uh, configuration setup, you also can customize this strategy group and we will also go into that details. So let me close this for now. So what I've did is basically I checked the procurement type but because I'm expecting uh, a process order to be created here and I've assigned this strategy group 82, right? And now let me go into the creation of the sales order and the transaction is VS01. Right, so let me just uh, put on this mandatory details. And my order quantity is going to be uh, 350 pieces and the plant code, that's it. So as you can see here, we are directly uh, moved on to the screen of the process order, right? And it says that the operation, I mean, since there is no uh, proper master data or maybe the production setup for this, it's actually uh, creating the default operation number 10. And you can see that all these activities that we usually see while creating the uh, process order are happening here. So I'm going to come back to this. And here you can see that we are in the component overview screen. So uh, this is exactly the transaction of uh, the CO R1. But here you wouldn't see uh, the, the transaction code uh, change to CO R1, but instead we will see it as VS01. Why? Because we are creating the order from the sales order screen itself, right? So here I can see the operations and I can see the uh, materials, the components on there. So I can also see the dates of this particular uh, process order. And if I go back one step, right? So now if I go into the schedule lines of this particular uh, item, item number 10, we can see that the total order quantity uh, is basically a 350 pieces. So I'm going to come back to the uh, initial screen and I'm going to save this. Okay, let me edit. It's asking the net value. A 
okay so now I'm going to save this okay so that ATP check is basically for the components so now we can see that the sales order number 19154 has been created so let me go to the MD04 for the material and here I can see the sales order number the schedule line and also the uh, process order number that has been created against this particular requirement and this particular strategy group uh, 82 it basically works only in the scenario of a make to order so for that reason you can see that the plant stock is zero and we also can see a, a different segment for the sales order stock so uh, this is going to be a special stock category so once I perform the goods receipt of the uh, process order, then the stock will be pushed into the customer specific stock or the sales order stock. So it's not going to be uh, placed in the unrestricted use, but because this is a make to order scenario. So now I can directly uh, go into the details of this process order. You can use your regular transactions, but I'm just navigating it from the MD04. And here we can see the account assignment against the sales order and the line item right and you can do the uh, subsequent steps while I mean of releasing the process order and then do the goods issue and then the uh, goods receipt right so that will be the usual process so if I go back uh, uh, into more details of this particular strategy group so let me uh, go into the configuration details So I'm going into SPRO under the production. We have the production planning and then demand management. And under this we have the plan independent requirements where you can find the planning strategy here. So if I go into the details of the defined strategy and my strategy group is basically 82. So here we can see that the requirement uh, type that has been assigned to this uh, planning strategy is basically KMFA that is basically the standard uh, requirement type for the assembly orders and here in the requirement class this is a, a customized uh, one that has been copied from the standard requirement class 201 so let me open a, di a different screen and show you the differences between Z01 and 201 so 201 is the standard requirement class, right? That will be assigned with this KMFA. So I'm going into this OVZG. That's the direct transaction for the requirement class. And here, let me check for the Z01. So this is the Z01 that I've created. And in the another screen, let me show you the standard uh, 201 as well. So this is the 201. And I'm going to keep the screen side by side. So, and before that, let me also show you the uh, sales order. 19154 and here in the item 10 if you go into the procurement tab you can see the requirement type and the schedule and category that has been assigned to this particular line item so here we are talking about the requirement type KMFA so I'm going to go back to the screen yeah so here we are so KMFA since it has been assigned with Z01 let's try to compare uh, what are the differences between the standard 201 and the customized 201? So the first one as you can see here is uh, The assembly type here the assembly type for 201 is uh, 2 and whereas in Z01 I made it as 3 So what is the difference between that? so 3 it basically uh, Works with the creation of the production order or the process order with the dynamic processing but in case if I use it as a 2, then it, it is going to be a static processing. It's not a dynamic processing, right? So here the assembly type is 2. 
So I just wanted to uh, show you, uh, I mean, how flexible it is basically to change the configuration. So that's the reason I wanted to show you these. And uh, next thing is that if you want to do an order costing, I mean, as soon as you uh, create the uh, production order, so automatically the costing should also be executed in the background during the creation process, then you have to activate this checkbox here, the order costing. So uh, this is very flexible for you to uh, choose uh, these options. So these particular assembly uh, fields that you see here, these parameters are going to play a vital role in the complete uh, dynamic order processing scenario. And here, if, if you choose the automatic planning, this is basically for the components, whether the automatic MRP run should be executed in the background during the creation process itself or not, right? And then we have the, so I need not tell system every time that, see, you have to pick this particular process order type and so on. So this can be uh, defined in the configuration itself. And the next one is the availability check of the components. So should the components be checked during the creation process or not? So as you have seen in our scenario, while we created uh, the uh, line item 10 in the sales order, we can see that we have been navigated into the process order and directly we see the missing part list, right? So that's happening uh, because of this particular checkbox, the availability of components. And next, we have the type of the component check. So the options that we have here is basically the ATP check and then check against the preliminary planning. So since I've marked it as blank, it's always going to be based on the ATP check and the availability uh, check that has been assigned to the components in the material master. And then we have online assembly. So, yeah. So uh, this particular uh, field is basically that the online assembly is not required or should we display the missing uh, part list or should we display the uh, missing parts and then process the components or the third option to display and process the missing parts. But this third option is basically uh, available only in the production orders but not in the process orders. So the online assembly option here I've selected is two so that I want to see the missing parts at the time of creating the uh, order itself. So for that reason the missing part list is shown in the creation process uh, in the process order. And then we have the capacity check. So it's not that we just create the, pro uh, the process order and release it for processing, but we also need to make sure that the capacities are also available in order to meet the scheduled dates coming from the sales order. So here I have choose the option as lead time scheduling. And if you like to also do the capacity check, so you can choose the option two here. So these are a few uh, key fields that you're going to use. But on the left hand side, these are basically for the independent requirements or the PIRs. So it makes no difference like uh, whatever field or whatever value you use under these particular uh, options. So let me uh, change some of this. So for example, I'm going to remove the online assembly as no, I don't want to see any missing parts. And for the capacity check, I will use the two option. I want to look at the uh, capacity as well. And next, the availability of components. And then I don't want to do any automatic planning and no order costing. And then coming to the assembly type, this is a bit tricky here. So if you would like to change this field uh, from this current setting to a, uh, a different uh, option, then you have to create a different requirement class. So system is not going to uh, allow you to change this from three to two or maybe one or to any of these values, right? So if you would like to change the value, you have to go with a new requirement class, something like Y01, for instance. So I'll just uh, show you like, uh, I'll try to make it as one or maybe three. So you can see that, I mean, see this error message, right? So the switching to assembly type one is not valid. Uh, let me check with uh, the option two, for example, with the starting processing. So you always get this kind of an error message. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And yeah, 
So let me just save it. Okay. So now I'm going to create a new sales order. Why? Because there is a change in the configuration. And then the material. Now the quantity is going to be, let's make it 600. And the plant, 3000. The system has created an error during availability check. But you can see the difference between the previous execution and this particular process. The availability check or the missing part list is not di uh, displayed in this particular screen, right? So it's only going to give us an information that the orders are missing and this is based on the order type dependent parameters that we have actually executed, I mean uh, maintained for this order type and the plan combination. So that is going to work. And now you can see that it's actually looking at the capacity requirements based on the uh, change that we have done uh, in the requirement class. So now it has checked the capacity and it says that there are no requirements capacities exist, that's fine and again the checking rule but whereas in the previous case you had uh, I mean you we have seen a different uh, uh, screen for the components and it uh, it is actually telling us that uh, these are the components uh, uh, missing right and of uh, what is basically needed for the consumption process so that's how you can uh, actually uh, you know uh, tweak the configuration and uh, play with this so if I go into the procurement so here I can also see the complete dates for the schedules and so on. So if I just save this, okay, let me complete this document. Okay, I'm going to save this now. Right, let's go back to MD04. And these are the two lines. So this is the first line that we have created uh, with the quantity of 350 where we have uh, seen the availability check uh, and the missing part list as well. And whereas the second line with the 600, I mean the second sales order with the 600 quantity, it behaved in a, a different way. So both these uh, process orders are different with uh, two different process order numbers right and two different sales orders for the same uh, material that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel also click on the bell icon to receive updates we'll meet again soon in our next video until then take care stay safe stay healthy Bye bye